So why come hunting at Beyond Seclusion, especially if you're like Bobcat? We've got some just incredible hunting here at, Bo at Beyond Seclusion. Um, we raise fowl in the free range and we usually have got, you know, several hundred at a time. And we've got, you know, as, as you can see, just the absolute perfect habitat and the bobcat just keep coming back. They've ate probably a thousand to two thousand dollars worth of fowl. And we lock our fowl up at night and they just, they eventually catch on that if they just run through the yard in the middle of the afternoon, they grab a duck or a chicken. So anyway, um, it's kind of a necessity. There's, there's really no other option. So I don't have any more room for bobcat on my wall for mounts or rugs. And so that's kind of why we opened up Beyond Seclusion to bobcat hunting. Hey, this is Drew. Welcome back to Beyond Seclusion. Doing some bobcat hunting. We were out, uh, actually we were hunting here last night and we sat and we called for quite a while. It got dark. We went back up to the cabin and I was putting my gun in the truck and a bobcat walks out. I thought it was a, I thought it was a small deer. Huge bobcat. And he's walking like 30 yards across this little alfalfa clearing. My gun's not chambered. So I chamber it. I bring it up. I got him in the crosshairs and it's still on safety. Look down, flick it on safety, get back up. He ran into the trees. <laughs> and I missed him. 30 yard bobcat by the cabin uh, from my truck. So anyway, we've been out this morning. It is it's just some crappy, crappy, cold, windy weather. We've been sitting on the other side of the property calling all morning. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna give this a little try. I got my collar down there by the pond. We're gonna we're gonna do a bird call, and uh, hopefully we call something in. It'd be nice. Haven't seen anything this morning, so anyway, let's get to hunt. I got a really old Fox Pro here. This is what we're gonna use for hunting. I taped uh, taped all the different calls on the back here. We're just gonna hit mute. We're just gonna let that go for a while. they're not the smartest and then sometimes like if there's more than one they'll come back so anyway that one he rolled down into the pond we're gonna let the collar go here for a bit we're gonna see if that other one's gonna come back up I want to wait for a while because those guys are tough last thing I want to do is chase him and I don't want to blood trail him so Bobcats. How awesome would that be if we can get that second one to come back? I've been trying to sell a hunt. I've been trying to get people. I've had several calls. You know, what's the chances you think we could call a bobcat in? So I, I don't know. Pretty good.
Sweet. That is awesome. Okay, so if you're if you're kind of new to bobcat hunting, they're smart, but they're also just dumb. <laughs> I shot the one. We left the collar playing, waiting for the other one to make sure that he's dead. And he comes and he peeks back up over the hill. It wasn't a side shot. He was a dead on chest shot. So. Uh, he jumped. He jumped straight up in the air. So hopefully, let's wait a few minutes here and let's go find him. Okay, my videographer went home because it's four hours later, four hours, I've been looking for this bobcat. I, I was that close to giving up. Now I still gotta see if I can find the other one. Four hours. I've been looking for this guy. Man, these guys are tough. I am so happy. <laughs> Four hours I've been looking for this guy. Yeah, baby. So we went hunting. We had some good luck um, and some not so good luck. In my defense, that big one up there, okay? Let's just take a look at him. This first cat I ever shot, this first cat I ever shot, he was a big one. If you look, I'll show you a picture here. He crawled up in the back of my truck and he ate some of the deer that I had shot and field dressed and put in the trailer. He crawled up in there at night while I was sleeping in the cabin the truck and the trailer was parked right next to the cabin. Take a look at the exit wound. You couldn't have had a better shot. Perfect chest shot, quarter half dollar size exit wound. And I'm gonna show you how he ran. It's, it's just, it's crazy how tough these guys are and how far they can run. He's 50 yards over to that wood pile. And when you see the exit wound, take a look at this. It was a clean chest shot, and that exit wound is at least quarter to half dollar size. So he left a very, very small blood trail, and he ran all the way over, and he crawled in this brush pile right in here. I spent an hour crawling all over this thing he went in there and he crawled all the way through the brush pile and there was a hole way down in there i basically got upside down with a flashlight i gotta say i, I was <laughs> i was scared as crap and i'm hanging down and i'm shining the flashlight and he crawled all the way through that brush pile and he happened to die right there where i could just get my arm out and grabbed him, okay? That was a 30 pound Tom, that exit hole, it was a perfect shot, and he did that. Those guys are tough.
Well, it's the next day. I found blood trail from the second one that I shot in the chest. We had a good blood trail. He went about a hundred yards across the creek and there was a brush wood pile the size of a small house and that's where the blood trail ended. And I'm sure he's probably in there and I, <laughs> I did the best I could. I've shot them before and had them go into wood piles. I've been lucky and pulled them out. I'm not gonna find that one. He's, he's forever in that wood pile. So I'm gonna go see if I can find another one here. The, the search continues. Well, it's, it's pretty much about the end of the second day. It's cold. Uh, we've been searching for a couple hours here. We followed that blood trail, went back into the trees, and he went into a wood pile. And I got lucky once before. Getting him out of a wood pile is, you know, is kind of like one in a million. So anyway, we're tired, it's cold, we're calling it a day. Overall, it was a good hunt. We called in two. That was awesome, incredible experience. I've never called in two cat like that before, let alone shoot one and wait 10 minutes and call back in the other. But uh, we got one. I'm happy. I would have been happier if we got the second one, but you win some, you lose some. Oh, hey, I almost forgot. I just found out that a lot of my kids' friends and a lot of our friends' kids like to watch my YouTube channel. This is why I always keep the channel age appropriate and I don't allow inappropriate comments. Um, so anyway, to all the young people watching, you know, be responsible, be safe. Always gun safety, you do well in school, be responsible, listen to your parents, and someday you get older and you're responsible. These are the kind of things that you have to look forward to. Get in the house, um, being able to spend time with family and, and you know, enjoy your hobbies and just enjoy life. So keep doing what you're doing, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, be safe and happy hunting.